Hi, this is Rosalinda and welcome to Viewpoint, coming from beautiful SKC campus from KSKC Studios in Pablo, Montana. And I'm just really happy to be here today with two special guests from NCBI. Uh, this is Tyler Cheetah and this is Echo Beck. I just want to thank you so much guys for coming on the show. I really appreciate you guys traveling all the way up here from the Missoula area. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you for having You're us. You're so welcome. I really appreciate that. I know that, that, you, that you worked with um, Heidi Wallace mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well, who is the Director of Youth Programs at NCBI in Missoula. So she's a wonderful person and I just really appreciate the work that NCBI does in this topic of, of bullying, in which is what we're going to be talking about today um, in, in schools. And so I just, um, I just want to say thank you. Welcome to Viewpoint. And um, I hope that you enjoy this as much as I'm enjoying this. Um, tell me, how did you get involved with NCBI and become a peer leader? Because you are peer, peer leaders, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for me, I didn't know what NCBI was. and. Um, I got a letter from them in the mail. Um, I was nominated by a teacher to go to their um, summer train the trainer camp. And I went and I really enjoyed it. I love the work that NCBI does and I was kind of hooked after that. That's great. Mm -hmm. How about you Echo? They have a um, middle school program which is called Respect Club and when I was in seventh grade I joined the Respect Club. And so the year after eighth grade, the summer before my freshman year, I attended the training camp and I got trained as a trainer and then the next year I started doing different trainings um, in Missoula and around the state with Heidi and now I travel with her and I also went to a national um, week-long training event in DC this summer to further my leadership. So. That's great. So NCBI like really is able to offer leadership skills which is wonderful and mentorship skills mm -hmm. it sounds like mm -hmm. and you know um, in, in talking about school and, and everything, this, this topic, this is a, a, a sequel to a first um, a taping that we had with, with Heidi about this important topic. And it's really, it's really an important topic to me and to, and to lots of people about bullying in schools and how harmful that is um, to, to other people and the effects that, that it can have and um, to where people end up killing themselves or yeah creating harm um, that, is, that is beyond repair in other people's lives. And so can you tell me in your own words, what are the issues around bullying and mistreatment that you notice in your school? Well, I think Hellgate is like most national, nationwide, you know, it has homophobia, it does have racism towards Native Americans especially. And I think those are the two main issues in our school, unless you have more to add. Um, I just think a main thing is we're kind of seen as in Missoula as the accepting school mm -hmm. and I think a lot of that is really true but at the same time we kind of have this this, um, this reputation for being really accepting and that's not always the case sometimes. Um, we had to have a lot of bullying, um, homophobia and racism I'd say are the so, top two. So because of that um, view as us as the accepting school we also get kind of pushed under the rug you know people don't think that there's bullying in Hellgate Top in comparison priority, yeah. to the other schools. I'll be darned. You know, I, I wonder why. I wonder why that misconception is out there about about the Hellgate school. And that's that's a real interesting um, topic. And, and and it's almost like I've heard it from from other people in saying that Missoula is a very accepting location mm -hmm. for diversity, mm -hmm. but in sometimes there it's not as accepting as as it would as we would like it to be in, in certain ways, and so I I kind of hear that of what's happening with your school as well. Um, what are the skills you've learned through NCBI that uh, helped you be an ally to others out there? Um, I think the main thing NCBI tries to teach is just. Um, kind of acknowledgement of other people's feelings, you know, you're not really going to try to shift in another person's attitude towards someone else if you kind of react in a angry kind of um, emotional kind of way, you know. If you try to acknowledge where they're coming from, you can kind of get a better understanding and try to get the um, problem at the roots. It's helped me learn people's stories and mm -hmm. know how to learn people's stories. So it's it helps with um, argumentative situations where someone is, there's like an offensive and a defensive. It kind of neutralizes that, the skills that it teaches you. So it, it teaches you to 
kind of take a step back and um, sometimes put your feelings aside if necessary, depending on what has been said towards you or said towards a group, and then get at the root of that um, abuse and that mistreatment. And you know, when we talk about mistreatment and abuse, I know that um, through my through my years of growing up, and I mentioned this in, in, in the previous taping, is that I was, I was uh, discriminated and harassed as being different mm -hmm. through all of my schooling. Um, and um, it, was, it was difficult for me, and uh, it was quite difficult for me. And there were several times that I wondered, how am I going to get through this? Mm -hmm. um, because there wasn't, uh, there wasn't that support there. So I'm, I'm happy that, that there are allies like both of you out there and, and, and NCBI that people can look to and be able to draw from in, in, in times of crisis like that. Um, what programs um, exist at Hellgate that prevent bullying and harassment? There is the NCBI. We do the trainings for all the freshmen at Hellgate. So I think this year is the first one of the, well, they've been doing it for a while, so yeah. all of the grades have been trained by NCBI. So all of the kids should have been trained by NCBI. I think it started right after my grade. I was the only, okay. I was the last grade that didn't have that done to us. So we have NCBI trainings. Um, we do have things like Respect Club. It isn't affiliated with NCBI in high school, but there still is a Respect Club. There's GSA. I mm. think you're more involved with that than I am. And what's GSA? Um, it's Gay Street Alliance. Gay Street Alliance, okay. So that's helpful. There's also, of course, the counselors and teachers as, ref as references. And I believe that there are a few teachers at Hellgate who are NCBI trained, and mm. most of them do um, attend the freshman training. So that's great. So um, with these with with these trainings that that you mentioned, do you think that more training needs to happen within different schools? What do you think about that? Um, I definitely think it's a huge issue. Bullying goes, you know, all schools nationwide. Um, and Big Sky and, and Hellgate are two schools that do do it in um, Missoula, but Sentinel hasn't really yet, but we're still working on that, and we hope to get NCBI into Sentinel. Mm -hmm. That's great. I was reading an article out of The Advocate um, recently, and this article said that the New Jersey Republican Governor Chris Christie signed a bill mm -hmm. uh, to establish a statewide anti-bullying law. That was, this, that was the beginning part of January. And so faculty and staff would be required to report all incidents of bullying inside and outside of school, and administrators who do not act on reports of bullying would, would be disciplined Furthermore, students who harass other students would be punished in their actions. How do you feel about that? I think it's a step in the right direction. I'm not sure if it is the answer, though, okay. because I really feel like something like NCBI needs to be implemented in most schools so that not only do you punish the bullies, but you can help the bullies understand how they hurt people mm -hmm. because just punishing someone will not change that's the actions. Great, that's a great message. What did, you, what did you think of this with Governor Christie? Um, I actually really agree with Iku. I think um, I I do think it's a pretty important step to take to um, punish, you know, bullying, but um, also try to get in there and shift people's attitudes so bullying doesn't even take place in the first place. Or it's, and it's a good step, just acknowledging it too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, at least they're at least they're making a note to um, pay more attention to it. I um, when I interviewed Heidi um, prior to, to to this, and we had talked about how how was that in getting in getting the people who, who were doing the bullying mm -hmm. <laughs> in part of the the clubs, and and um, you know I remember her saying that it, it was it, it it was positive. It, they actually had a really great positive response from it. And so, you know, I think that's a great message, and um, that's really good that, that you mentioned that. I appreciate that. Um, what do schools need to do to prevent um, bullying and violence? What, what do you think of that? I think they really, I think they need resources, and I think they need to, at a younger age, start teaching the kids how to react to different situations. Because one of the hardest problems for me before NCBI is, was when I heard something offensive about a group or about 
a friend or about me, I would react right away with, you know, you sentences, you know, like, I can't believe that you're saying this. Whereas you need to step back and kind of think like, or when you're speaking, use more I statements. So I feel like the best way is just to, to train the kids, to teach the kids how to react to different situations, and also to train the teachers. To train the teachers. And the administrators. The Very good. Um, the, what, how, how do you think that um, cyberbullying, or you know how people have Facebook and MySpace and Twitter and all of these other ones. I have a Facebook account, and but I, I, I've heard and I've seen and I can see how bullying can happen in the cyber, um, in social networking yeah. world out there, mm -hmm. and that and how and how sometimes that can carry into school, in so many ways because everyone almost has a Facebook, everyone almost has has, has a MySpace account. How do you answer questions when it relates to cyberbullying when that happens? So, uh, oh, on. I'm a little confused by the question. Sure. How would you, um, how, how, how would you deal if, 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 if a person came up to you and said, you know, I'm being bullied by this guy online or by this girl online and I don't know how to handle it? Mm. You know? that's, it's that, a, that's a good question. It's a really hard situation. I think in that case, you really need to have a talk with the person who is the perpetrator uh -huh. and find out the underlying weaknesses because generally bullying comes from either a hurt person or a really self-conscious person. At NCBI, we say hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And so you need to find out what that, that ouch or that hurt is mm -hmm. beneath and why they're going off and, you know, saying things about someone mm -hmm. online. Because, I mean, if it's the kind of person who wouldn't say it in real life, then you really, it, it's a lot harder to figure that out. It can be a lot harder for sure. What, um, what do, uh, what does the school, the staff, the educators um, do to create an inclusive learning community at your schools? They do attend, for me, it's just um, a lot of them attend the NCBI trainings, so a lot of them have the skills. There are a few teachers, of course, there's always a few people uh -huh. who are the exception to that, mm -hmm. but um, I think the best way to create an inclusive environment is ju just to let your kids know that anything is okay, you know, like any denomination, any like sector, any walk of life is okay in your classroom. And I think the easiest way to do that is to kind of incorporate it into the curriculum in some ways. Mm -hmm. So to just make it a, a much more diverse um, class. I mm -hmm. agree with you. I think that that part of it is also from a from a from a student handbook issue and saying that, you know, that that we won't discriminate based on sexuality, gender, race, all of that stuff as well. Um, I think, I think that, that some of these issues are, are, can, can be, are kind of, it starts from the top down in, in so many ways. And so I think that also with, with the work that you all do um, is helping to change people's perspectives of what bullying is and, and thinking of what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. And so um, it, it can be very, very interesting in, in school boards, for, for an example, in trying to pass those kind of um, issues at school boards. But um, I wanna thank you so much for being here and we're gonna take a short break. So, um, and we'll be right back with Eco and Tyler. Thank you. Thank you. I fill my mind with knowledge and wisdom. I make decisions without alcohol or drugs. I let go of the things that hold me back. I honor my body by protecting myself. One heart, one mind, one world. HIV affects everyone. Get tested. Hi and welcome back to Viewpoint, and with us today again is Eco Beck and Tyler Cheetah. They are peer leaders with NCBI. So 
Um, thank you again for being on the show. And as we were talking about bullying, um, why do you think bullying is such a hot topic now within um, different um, social groups? Why do you think that it's become such a hot topic? I think a lot of it is society right now. Um, we've kind of gone into the, um, taking a really deep look at um, all the um, gay suicides yes. that have been going on recently. And um, I think society's taking a deeper look at that and it's become a bigger issue and we're just trying to prevent it. Absolutely. What do you think? I think equal? that we have finally drawn the link between depression and suicides mm -hmm. and bullying. Um, due to a lot of things lately in the media, the um, s the girl who was bullied on social networking last year mm -hmm. who killed herself, yeah. and then um, the recent um, gay suicides. And so I think that we've kind of finally, finally woke up and noticed. It, you know, I uh, and I'm glad, and I'm glad, mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that mm -hmm. you that you and NCBI are out there advocating for anti-bullying stuff and being, being able to be out there as allies. I am glad that finally something is being done on this topic because it's been too long. Yeah. It's been too long. Um, it's, been go it's been going on for, I mean, there's been gay suicides for a long time, but I think society has kind of gotten to the point where they can um, focus on it more in detail and um, try to make an increased effort to prevent it. Um, the thing is with um, people that are homosexual or in the LGBT mm -hmm. community is they get bullied at school. Uh, a lot of them get bullied at school, but um, they can also get bullied at home too. And sometimes it's, um, they can't really escape the bullying and that can um, lead to increased depression. Absolutely. Homelessness as well. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of depression, as you mentioned. I know that like within the, the, the winter months, it seems to be that there's more suicides Mm -hmm. um, within this area, don't don't you think? Yeah, I would I would probably say so. There is the seasonal depression, so absolutely, absolutely. Well, I just I just think that it is a hot topic, um, and I'm glad that they're finally doing something for it. And um, they were doing um, uh, like President Obama and Alan DeGeneres and um, uh, Hillary Clinton w were doing these um, videos about it gets better. Yeah, it gets I, better. What did you I've think seen about that those? project? I really appreciate that project. I actually went online the other day and ended up sitting there for almost an hour watching the different videos. And I think it really is a great way. You really need to get it into the media in order for people to pay attention to it. So I think it's great that this program is becoming much larger. I actually saw on the University of Montana website that I think they're starting a section of the It Gets Better project there too, so. That is great. Yeah, It's I've, really spreading. Yeah, I've, I've, I think I've sat on the computer for an hour before too and looked at those videos and I really appreciate them too. I thought it was uh, really wonderful to see President Obama there. Mm -hmm. Public know, figures, yeah. Absolutely saying, you know, it does get better and, and to have the, the, the sympathy and the empathy mm -hmm. of, 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 you know, saying that this is wrong and um, so I really appreciate that very much. Um, what are the effects of bullying, mistreatment, and harassment on, on the students? What, what could be those effects of if, if, if a student is being bullied or, or harassed? I think it could lead to the same thing, depression and possibly suicide, which you know, we would never want to take that route. We want to prevent it as soon as possible. Less motivation, too. It's a lot harder to go to school and to stay in school and graduate mm -hmm. when Absolutely. you are being bullied and, and you you're not safe. in a safe environment. And so I think one of the best steps towards keeping kids in school is to make a safe environment out of our schools. Absolutely, that's a wonderful thing. Absolutely, what, what about um, the NCBI model? Um, what about the, the way how NCBI does the, this modeling? Um, how does it work in, in schools? Well, one of the things that we do in the NCBI workshops is we do skits. So oh, we take um, great. like real life situations and we practice them out with the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we show them what the worst reaction could be to the situation, what the not so good reaction could be, and what the great reaction could be to a situation. So it really, we give them the skills and we instill in them the skills to um, 
do the appropriate thing in different situations that realistically happen in high schools. That is great. That, that sounds like a great way. Uh, and and it, it's a great visualization mm -hmm. as well. Um, how does it make a difference, these skits in, in, in your school? Um, I think I've noticed quite a difference. Um, people that I didn't think would be as accepting, you know, would go around and be really nice to each other. And sometimes it's not very visible, but you still know it's there, even during the workshop, during the skits. Sometimes students don't always get the um, get it right, but um, they're still, we pair them with other people that they're not quite familiar with and they cross boundary lines kind of, you know, as different cliques and they, you That's know, work correct. together and, you know, at, in the, at the end of the day, it's, we're still kind of accomplishing what we want to accomplish. You at least plant the seeds yeah. and show them that there is another way to react to the situation. And I think another great thing is that we use peer leaders to teach them this so it doesn't feel like it's an imposing, authoritative figure coming in, you know, like your principal saying, you know, you have to do it this way, but rather it's people your age who you can look up to and who you can learn from. You guys are building bridges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are building bridges out there and, uh, and that's wonderful and that's what needs to happen. These bridges need to be built between each other and, and amongst each other and regardless of race, sex, you know, sexual orientation, what, whatever that is, because we're all human. And I think that's great. I, you know, I'm, my hat goes off to, to both of you for the work Thank that you, you do yeah, at NCBI. Absolutely. Where, you know, since we're talking about this bullying, where do you think bullying comes from? What do you think, why do people bully? Well, as Tyler said before, mm -hmm. um, too. In NCBI, our thoughts are hurt people, hurt people. Tell me more about that. So say, here's an example. Say sure. um, your dad comes home and he's yelling and he yells at your mom and then your mom yells at you and then you go to school and you just have this hurt and this anger inside and you need to take it out on something and you take it out on someone near you or something like that. And it's not only um, like abuses from other people, but it's also like hurt inside like people can have self-esteem issues that cause them to bully and um we really try to take a look at um because uh, there's a lot of reactions someone could have they could um harm they could um you know throw it right back at the person that hurt them they could take it on on someone else or they can take it out on themselves and we just try to um teach people healthy ways of you know dealing with these emotions because we all experience them because they can take it out on themselves. That mm -hmm. you make a mm -hmm. very good point. You make a very good point. I don't think people, I think sometimes people forget about that, that people can hurt themselves yeah. um, and other people, but mostly if they internalize these issues, they can hurt themselves. It can themselves. lead to substance abuse or, you know. What other programs exist in schools or community um, that support um, bully prevention? people who are being bullied, what, what are the resources are out there that you know? There are respect clubs in all of the middle schools that are NCBI um, affiliated. There are respect clubs in all of the high schools which aren't NCBI affiliated, but they are mm -hmm. linked with NCBI. There are NCBI teachers at each school. Um, there are trainings for, all the, for the freshmen in all of the high schools except for Sentinel and there are community trainings. And right now, actually, me and Heidi have started a program in the elementary schools, a pilot program just this year. So it's only four weeks this year. We're hoping to implement it into the flagship for a respect club for the fourth and fifth graders too. That's great. Fourth and fifth graders. Mm -hmm. That's great because the bullying happens at that age. Oh, yeah. It happened to me. I feel like it blooms mostly out of fourth and fifth grade. And then once you get to middle school, it just gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. It does. It, it really does. I, I, have, I was um, bullied relentlessly mm -hmm. uh, through my grade school, through junior high school, through high school, and even through college as well. Um, and it was hurtful. It was meanful and mean-spirited. And um, it's, this, it's one of the reasons why it's such a passionate topic for me. But, it's, but I, I, can see I can see that it hurts other people and people are dying of it. You know, and um, and I'm just uh, it's it's one of the reasons why I think it's so pas passionate, and uh, because I don't want to see anyone 
else suffer from bullying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I, I think I think it can be pre prevented in so many ways. Um, the recently with with the bullying topic, um, there was this um, gay activist named Caleb um, Leisky, and according to to the advocate, um, he notified uh, of schools in Arizona saying that they wanted to. To, to put a stop on bullying, or he plans to file a lawsuit against mm -hmm. them. Um, the letters warn school officials that they must um, institute policies sp specifically prohibiting gay harassment by students. What do you think of that? I think that's a really good point he brought up because a lot of schools think that it isn't their responsibility to help out their mm -hmm. students, whereas in my opinion, it should directly come from them, not in an imposing um, punishmental way, but in a um, way where they can teach their students to create a safe environment and an accepting environment within their school. What do you think about that, Tyler? Um, I agree completely with Iku. I don't really have a lot to add on to that. I'm in complete agreement. It's a it's it's a huge step. I, I thought it was quite he was quite brave mm -hmm. in taking th this this step. Um, a really hard thing to do. A very hard thing yeah. to do. It takes a lot of courage. It does, and, um, and and it takes someone to to stand up and say, you know what, enough enough is enough. And with Arizona as being, um, you know, targeting also immigrants as mm -hmm. well, it's a really tough issue there. Yeah. It's a very t t tough issue about diversity and, and, and inclusiveness. Um, well, I just wanted to, it looks like we're almost out of time, but I wanted to definitely thank you both for being on the show. Yes, yeah, thank you. Thank you for I having really us. thank you so much. It's wonderful to see you guys doing such great work out there and keep doing the great work out there. I think you guys are going to do wonderful. And um, I know that it's, it's, it's more of a resource than what I had when I was growing up. So. I'm happy that this generation has NCBI and you two and everyone else associated with NCBI to help us through this and prevent uh, bullying in schools. So mm -hmm. again, um, my guests today are uh, Tyler Cheetah and Echo Beck, uh, peer leaders from uh, NCBI, and I want to thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much yeah, for thanks. having us. Thank you.